Hi, everyone. My name is Marie Driscoll. I'm Managing Director at Corsite Research. I'm so delighted to be here with you today. I want to thank Your Royal Highness Princess Nora Jordana of Fashion Innovation, Barack Kakmak, CEO, Saudi Fashion Commission and the Ministry of Culture, and my incredible panel. Um, I'm manorating an amazing panel of luminaries in the world of fashion, communication, design, sustainability. In fact, based on the sheer wattage of the celebrity power of the people that are joining me today, this session should really be called Building a Legacy, Fas Fashion Times Design Times Sustainability. I'm joined by, and forgive me for any mispronunciations, Oscar Metzavat, Nadia Swarovski, Sarah Sassano Maino and Lamia Al Atashian Ada. And we're going to discuss the importance of personal branding and relaying a personal experience when creating a legacy in fashion, and also how through their, the, all phases of their careers, they've maintained a common thread that unites all their endeavors while maintaining a cohesive belief through time of what the, of what the fashion industry should be. Really exciting stuff, right? I'm going to start with Oscar. Oscar is your 21st century renaissance man with expertise that, that spans talent, um, medicine, fine art, and fashion. Oscar is the founder and the creative director of uh, Osclin. It's a famous Brazilian fashion brand that you can get on Farfetch. And he's a recognized forefront leader of the concept of the new luxury, which is a fusion of ethics, aesthetics, and he advocates um, conscious sustainability, or as sustainable as possible. Oscar, let's start with you. How is sustainable fundamental to your view of fashion and your inspiration? Hi, Maria. Um, I mean, I think sustainability is something it's uh, it's uh, in, in, it's uh, an in point of us because sustainability is exactly uh, the balance and harmony from the human being and its environment. It's the nature that involves us. So it's kind of an, it's, it's a spiritual part of uh, of a human being. So um, sustainability. I think sustainability is, is not about. Uh, what we create, but what we search for and what we experience. Sustainability, I think it's, uh, I would say it's a wonderful new field for art, for designers, because um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a new, it's, a, it's a new fertile uh, field for us to research new materials, to design on materials. Because we designers, we are used to design with, uh, I would say, standard materials from the fashion industry. Materials that we have discovered, uh, elaborated uh, 100 years ago or some, something, or the new technologies of fabrics. Um, sustainability, uh -huh. it's about searching. So searching of the materials and to the post use of the clothing, the fashion things. It's a new field for designers. And that's why I'm very, it's a great field of inspiration. Thank you. So Nadia, um, Nadia comes from, um, the, Nadia is chair of the Swarovski Foundation. She's had a long, stellar career um, working with designers um, as famous as um, Alexander McQueen. I mean, you've partnered with the United Nations, launched Creatives for, for Our Future, which is a new global grant program where you are identifying and, and accelerating the next generation of creative leaders in sustainability. And now you're spanning creative talents across many sectors. Nadia, as you begin this um, new project and discover the next uh, generation, what do you find they're most interested in? And how is the fashion industry helping them to succeed? 
Well, I have to say, all of us here have had the honor and the privilege to be part of the fashion industry. It's such an amazing industry. It's so creative. It's so visionary. And what we've also all experienced, and all of you here are totally at the forefront, is the change that the at this, as this industry has also experienced. And it's such an exciting change because to me, the fashion industry certainly is about the creative problem solving. And as in the last few years, the awareness has increased about the pivotal impact of the fashion industry on the environment. And we've heard it also at the beginning of the session. I think um, the industry has taken it to heart to really be responsible, act responsible. What Oscar was just saying, you know, it, it's, um, so true, and it is. It comes from the heart, but also I think people in the industry realize that they, as individuals, can certainly contribute so much. Uh, what we're seeing with the young generation, and thus this program that we've now launched via the Swarovski Foundation and the UN Office for Partnership, is to truly embrace that young generation. We feel the young generation, uh, they're people of, they're change makers. They have a different way of thinking. They're totally aware of the various different uh, issues that are out there. They're very aware of the 17 uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. And uh, we want to be there to support them financially. We want to support them morally and encourage them. And we're also connecting them with the network that we have. Um, and we have put them in touch with the most incredible mentors from the various different disciplines of art, culture, design, architecture, biochemistry, engineering. I mean, so much of the solutions actually lie in engineering. And um, we just want to see what the meeting of those minds uh, res will result in, uh, in particular in uh, sourcing more sustainable materials and never compromising the beauty or the aesthetics that we're certainly trying to achieve. And something that I read about Oscar, which I totally appreciate, is just that combination of ethics with aesthetics. I think that is such a great tagline. And I think that, to me, is an indication that there's such a positive future for fashion. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I think, um, Nadia, as you say, there. Uh, coupling on or coming on the back of what Oscar said, what you're doing with the Swarovski Foundation and what Oscar is doing um, is very much a new point of view in terms of fashion. It's taking fashion from engineering. We're benefiting from what's happening in technology. And it seems like, you know, 2021 is such a new, exciting year for all of us. Um, so, so last year, I'm going to move on to Sarah. Um, last year, or no, not last year, last month, Sarah was awarded the, pod, the Positive Change Award at the Monte Carlo Fashion Week. Congratulations, Sarah. What a coup. Um, this is a culmination of a career of making a difference in fashion and design from your post at Vogue Italia. Um, please tell us how you've been instrumental in finding new creatives for more than a decade with Vogue Talents. And tell us about your work there, how it evolves in supporting sustainability, and expanding awareness on both the, uh, the creative front and the consuming front among, amongst consumers. Well, thank you, thank you for the question. Well, it's a lot, so I'm gonna be brief. I mean, um, I think that, I mean, <laughs> as Oscar, yeah, as Oscar and Nadia were saying, I think that right now the most important really um, aim that we need to do is to create a system that really speaks to each other and, and create awareness. I mean, um, I've been working for the industry for many years and the idea of Vogue Talents was to create a platform to support the new generation, which is our future and which we need to invest in. So I do think that in the last years there have been great platforms and initiatives that have guaranteed that this happens, but now it's really really the time to change and changing it's not just of an individual but it's of a system so I mean the whole work that's been done through Vogue Talents and Italian Vogue it's kind of a sense it is a sense of responsibility because we as media and people that are exposed and decide to expose because we want to you know make a change we have the great responsibility of making it happen and um, creating awareness it's something fundamental because it's the only way then to 
you know, change the system because we can do all the things we are doing, which uh, Oscar, Nadia and Lama are doing. But if then there is not, you know, the community that creates communication and awareness to the consumers, I mean, it's going to just stay in this beautiful room and it's not going to happen. So this is more, this is what I have been trying to achieve and trying to uh, transcend and and pass on because I do think that also passing on it's it's fundamental because it's nothing I mean nothing is kept you know in your in your house or in your table you, you need to share so this is something also important and I do think that and I wish basically that what happened in the last year and a half really made people think about that I mean changes needs to be done and this is just about facts and not anymore about talks so Basically, I mean, Vogue Talents uh, was born because um, myself, I had uh, the great opportunity to start, you know, working at Italian Vogue. My door was open. And then, you know, looking back, I was looking at the new generation that was struggling to have a space and a spotlight in the industry. So really, Vogue Talents was great, like a big door open. Obviously, selection has to be done because it's natural and it's uh, it's right to give the, you know, the right support to the people that are really believing it but it's really important to it's the new generation that's gonna you know take place um through all the other generations and i always say i mean we're on this planet but we are going through it i mean we're not staying all our lives so we need to work you know to to make it work in a in a better way especially for who comes next so this is main mainly the aim so thank you for the question Oh, thanks, Sarah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and um, Lamia. Lamia is the chief designer at Lay Benjamins, um, launching the women's line a few years ago. And she's in, enjoying growing recognition for her designs and brands worldwide. Congratulations, Lamia, because that's quite a feat. Um, as you think about the arc of your career, fashion has always been a passion from, like, didn't you change your major? So what's inspiring you today as you create your, um, as you design your collection? And how do you think about building a legacy and building a brand? Thank you, Murray, for the question. And I would just like to start saying that I'm honored to be a part of this experience and amongst amazing panelists. Um, to be completely honest, I'm inspired by everything around me, whether it's people or music or art, as cliche as that sounds, but it's true. And uh, to answer your question regarding building a legacy or building a brand, I don't think it's either or. I think building a, reg a legacy is building your own brand. And as you grow personally, as is your work. And uh, I feel like both of them build each other. Yes. Um, well, I know all of you are really passionate about making a difference um, with your design in the fashion world um, and, and making a difference in the world with fashion. Making a different and making the world a better place, Oscar. When, what is design thinking? How do you think about fiber to fabric to fashion? And do you feel that today's students are equipped with the sustainable resources that they need to design sustainably? And how can uh, we make that happen? How can we help students today? Okay, I. I, 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 what I can bring on that issue is uh, about, the, yes, we, we, we need the culture into the designs and students designers and on the chief creative from the brands um, in the company. We need the culture of sustainability, the sustainable design thinking. Um, what I mean, I mean that when we talk about sustainability as a designer, as a company, as uh, we talk, we always see, wow, we have to, we think that we need to, to do something sustainable. Uh, we have to support something sustainable. We have to become sustainable. Uh, the first thing, and some companies and designers, they, uh, I, I, I think uh, when 
many brands now are doing something like that, are thinking about, oh, I'm going to support a sustainable project. I'm going, you know, to donate something to to compensate what we are not doing. We we have to understand that our industry has two two main elements for changing the behaviors of society. About fashion is that fashion is about uh, human behavior and society behavior. I really believe we are a great protagonist uh, on, on the changing of uh, of the society way of consuming. So we have to waste fashion. We have, of course, we can bring the message, the communication about sustainability. And, uh, and second, uh, fashion designers, we, we, we have the chance to transform commodities into desirable products. So um, the sustainable design thinking must be in the mindset of the, of the designer. As for example, in our academia, in, uh, in, in when we, we have the student designers, we we learn to use the standard materials for for the fashion industry. We have in our mind when we begin a, a project, when we begin a collection, we have the the main. We know we have the fabrics. We understand about the colors, the forms, the textures, the the image of the the of the. Um, the campaign, we have all of this on our mind when we begin a project, but we don't have yet the sustainable design thinking to that. We don't know about that. We know, hey, we have to search some kind of material, etc. I think it's a great field for designers now, and the stu students must have, of course, the academia must have now sustainable design thinking into it. It's not about just uh, showing the new sustainable materials. Student design must go into the fiber thinking. We have to understand about the seed that we are using to bring the cotton. You know, we have the chance now to work with biotechnology to develop the fibers from the beginning. It's time for uh, designers not to think only working with those materials that comes from the standard industry. We have the chance and to be on the beginning of the search on the sustainable new new sorts of materials. So it's, it's about changing the, the culture of the company, the culture of the designers. We have to bring sustainability, not as a something extra, but in inside. An example, uh, I did it at Oscar with my, my team since the beginning, organically, of, of course, organically. We became, now when we begin a collection, sustainability is already in the mind. If, if uh, we think about a color that we want, we try, well, hey, we want to use a kind of red. Okay, we have the red already on the industry, but I say, hey, let's search for a red, a color that comes from a natural source. Let's, let's search for. If we find, okay, if we don't find, we try with academics or, or, or research institutions or here with us, with indigenous uh, from Amazon forests, and, uh, you know, way they used to do. So we search on that. So it's so interesting to go into there. And uh, for example, in, in a more practical way, uh, in 2018, 2019, uh, the brand Courage, the French uh, Courage brand, uh, they invited me to do a kind of collaboration. And I suggested, and it worked well, I, that I'd love to work with them to, change, to help to change the mindset of the designers into the sustainable design thinking. What I mean, it's not about just using a material that comes from a sustainable search for a collection, but get it to any collection that they would develop later with the mindset of sustainability inside. Uh, so yes, we have to bring to, to the students it's, it, matter. Mm -hmm. it's, it's such an opportunity to go further upstream to change um, the fabrics that we're working with at the farm, in, like the entire process. 
So Nadia, I, I mentioned before that you've worked with incredible designers. Um, your grandparents partnered with Dior and Chanel to create incredible Swarovski studded fashion. I'm wearing Swarovski on my glasses. Um, now with Creatives for, for Our Future, how do you hope, how do you ha hope to guide today's, um, you know, today's young designers? Well, it's so interesting. I have to say, yes, indeed, my grandfather was one who inspired me so much when he used to tell me stories about working with Coco Chanel and Christian Dior and his grandfather working with uh, the couturier Worth, you know, in Paris, who, who created the gowns for Queen Victoria in 1895. So it was a challenge. You know, I always wanted to find my wow. grandfather's equivalent of Mr. Dior. And so I found this young designer who was known called Alexander McQueen. And the challenge to him was to um, reintroduce crystal to the fashion industry and, you know, make it interesting. And he certainly was a person that was so appreciative of working with various different materials, with plastics, leathers, woods. And so crystal was yet one more creative ingredient to work with um, to fulfill his designs. And I think we are right now uh, experiencing the same process with the new designers. It's a matter of introducing them to new materials, sustainable materials that are out there and um, making them feel comfortable with those new materials. And as we were saying, also the thinking just needs to change and you just go back to the seeds that we're usually, literally planting to create a material, you know. And um, I think uh, the function will certainly follow the form. It's very, very exciting. And I think with sustainability as the end result, perhaps fashion will change. In fact, to Sarah's point, I think we have seen an impact, a positive impact of what the last one and a half years have had on us, uh, namely in the sense of there's more groundedness. I think there's a greater connection between the mind and the heart and certainly uh, with the environment. So beyond just coming up with new materials, which we're really trying to push with this project, Creators of the Future, I think the entire thinking of fashion, the reusing, the recycling, um, you know, that sustainability the less uh, waste element that we see within the fashion industry is also very, very positive. Um, and also in terms of the young generation, as Sarah was saying, what's so important is to share them. Sarah, I have to say, I commend you. It's amazing what you've done and your platform is so incredible. And just think how many designers have gone unnoticed, you know, um, and how much talent is out there. So I think that entire community of also greater communication um, the facilitation of communication of what's out there is going to really help the entire world to become more sustainable and, you know, push on that agenda. Thank you, Nadia. Nutshell. Yes, Sarah, <laughs> it's like you have an amazing, <laughs> in a nutshell, Sarah, you have an amazing position at Vogue, you know, as part of media communication. You're bringing together businesses and fashion brands and new designers. And, and really, COVID has changed thinking, as Nadia has pointed out. Um, how, do you, how do you see businesses as being more receptive to the idea of sustainable fashion, you know, today versus two years ago? Well, it's, I mean, it seems repetitive, but it's always um, a question of, uh, of awareness because also getting back to what Oscar was saying, I mean, the base of everything is education. I mean, uh, now it's, if consumers decide to start and buy responsible is because they have the, they have the tools or they can achieve information from media or from education because the moment um, the person decides to go in a shop and buy a T-shirt or whatever, they're already deciding something. I mean, it's already a responsibility of buying that object because you're buying it, you're giving the money, so you're deciding something. So going back, it's like it's a vicious circle. So it starts all from the education. By education, it's not just a starting point in university and schools. You have to go way much back and go to kindergarten and because if you put, you know, responsible um, <laughs> subjects in kindergarten and you do then your 18 year course in school and you're used to study responsible, I say, fashion or responsible community, such as you're studying history or maths, then when you're 18, you're going to be much more wider thinking of doing something 
that can make a positive impact. So going back to your questions about business, it's that it's there the answer. I mean, education is the core of everything because it's um, it's where people can you know achieve and think about okay. Uh, I can decide at least then whether uh, maybe then I decide not to be responsible, but at least I know what does it mean to be responsible. So this is kind of, and this, I think it works for all the elements that we are talking about today, because it's about, you know, thinking in a different way and where there's no access to education, because then there's a big part of, you know, of, of people that do not have access to education. Then comes the system of the fashion system of the platforms that need to give, accessibility to all those people that do not have. So that's why it's kind of a circle that continues to turn around. But it has to always go on, you know, and this is something that's why I say important to make, to create the system and make it happen. So so it's like we have to educate um, educate our, our, our society so that they see the consequences of their choices. Because you don't, a lot of what we have today is unintended consequences because people haven't thought through their choice. Um, Sarah, uh, I'm sorry, Lamia, you've been designing for nearly a decade. And what's your experience designing with sustainable materials? Has, has it been easy to access them? And how do your customers value sustainability in your designs? Yeah, it's true. I've been designing for nearly a decade. And, you know, with COVID, I started doing some self-reflection and thinking a lot about it because I am a designer who's a part of a brand. And that's also a part of an industry that's been affecting our uh, ecosystem greatly. So um, for us even to take st steps like that, it goes back to what Sarah said. It's educating ourselves. We need to be truly sustainable and understanding the whole concept of it in our daily lives and then kind of like understanding how to imply it. Um, we are, uh, our goal actually is to be more sustainable in our brand. And for that to happen, we are taking steps that is going to hopefully become a part of our DNA. But we cannot just say suddenly we are sustainable without being truly uh, like believing in it and taking the right steps to it. Uh, we would rather um, not over promise and uh, deliver, you know, so that's my answer for you. Well, as sustainable as possible, as Oscar said, right? Oscar, yes, like exactly. COVID, the last year and a half has changed the way, has changed the way, uh, has changed all of our lives, how we live, what we eat, where we shop, how we shop, what we wear. How has it changed your view of what fashion can do in our culture? And has it changed how you actually go through your design process? Um, I, I, I think um, if, we, Maybe, maybe my, you know, my, as I said, my, on my, um, my life being a, as a, being a physician, of course, I don't work as a physician for a long time, but uh, uh, the knowledge, the spirit of healing, it's already on. We can see that's why maybe, uh, well, when we talk about sustainability, we are talking about healing the planet. I think, of course, it's a romantic, maybe naive talking about that, but it's really that. It's our relationship to that. So I think what we, we have done on the last uh, two decades is about uh, what COVID uh, leads, uh, what happened to us. Um, by a coincidence, in December, uh, November, December uh, 2019, um, I suggest I was re reading back the book, uh, The Gaia Thesis by James Lovelock. James Lovelock is a, he's a physician, physics, mathematics researcher. He has 102 years old. He's a, a British um, scientist. And he wrote in 1979 the book, The Gaia Thesis. That means what? Uh, that the Earth is just one organism, interdependent in all um, live species that we have on it. We have to live in harmony to keep uh, healthy the planet. An unbalance of that 
creates what did COVID on that time. It was uh, me and my team, and uh, we, we are very surprised because we were talking about Gaia, our Gaia collection, what we did bring. It's, uh, it's a kind of thinking about this, this imbalance that COVID created. COVID did come from an imbalance in, from the human beings with nature. And, and I, I really think that um, COVID helped us to change the mindset of the planet society in, into the, the new millennium, the new era. We, we, we are already 21 years, two decades already in the 2000 years. It's about, uh, we are talking about the future. Of course, we are living a, a moment like the Renaissance, where uh, science, uh, technology né, came and helped us, art, science and philosophy together uh, to become more humans. It was what happened in the Renaissance. We came from the Middle era. We came from the mysticism. We came from so many things. And we became, with art, science, and philosophy, more humans. And we became to this revolution that we had on the last five centuries. And now we are living this new, new, new millennium that uh, we are new era. We are in the year of Aquarius. I think COVID did bring to us, you know, to really hear everything what we think it's exactly what we think. Um, and what I'm, I, I, I love to say that, uh, Mary, that I'm, I'm very happy, I would mean that I'm living this generation in the, in, the, in the history of our civilization, of the human adventure in this planet. We, our generation, we are living a transition point of the planet. We are being the protagonists of change and of, of 200 years of industrialization that we, we have developed a lot of things, but we, we bring up a dying planet. But I really think that uh, our generation, uh, we become, the mindset has changed now with COVID and everybody would pay attention for um, biologists, sociologists, thinkers, designers, arts entrepreneurs that have developed in the last decades new, 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 new concepts through their vision, new concepts, new methodologies, new materials that comes for a sustainable search. And so I think it's the time, um, yes, we are, we are being a kind of, a, we, we, our generation, we are the luminists of this new era. That's why, come on, look, we are all together here talking and exchanging our vision, concepts, ideas, our methodologies, practice. We are suggesting something that uh, uh, Nadja and Sarah said and Lamia is doing right. That's, we need collaboration. We need as soon as possible to change knowledge and practice. And this is the new, yes, uh, I, I agree that I think Sarah knows that. And, uh, it, it's more than, it's a, it's a new trend, but it's a trend for the century. We are living exactly this point. And to be a protagonist on that, yes, it's, it's great. Changing as an artist, I think, I think most artists, my friend, artists, us, we, uh, I think every human on this planet, we are, we are being very touched into us in many senses and our relationship with the environment and with the others, and with the others. So artistically, yes, it's changing a lot because we go into India and we express our pain or our virtues, virtuosity that we are we seeing. And as a designer, uh, because art is an expression, free expression of our soul, but design is a strategic uh, expression of our desires. So nice. everything is changing in a, in a very, it's a very interesting moment we are living. We surely are. Um, there's lots of silver linings that COVID brought about. You know, um, Nadia, with the power of your 100 plus year old Swarovski brand, your dedication to innovation um, and the arts, products, the Swarovski Foundation, like, what excites you as we sit here? What do, you see, what do you envision happening in the next 5, 10, 15 years that you'll be a part of? 
Well, certainly what excites me is to read Oscar's book. <laughs> Oscar, you have to write a book. I mean, I just love, you know, what you do, how do you sum, summarize it? You know, it is the age of the queers, and, you know, that's an age of collaboration. Um, and the fact that we're all luminaries. We have the advantage. We've learned so much. We've experienced so much that so we can implement our knowledge and experience and carry that forward. The young generation is lucky because, yes, they automatically, they have that new sensitivity so innately in their system, it's amazing. And then as Sarah was saying, education is so important. And yes, it starts at grade school or even beyond. And it's amazing. I have to say, looking at education, how already education is pigeonholing people, starting with the male in the female uniform and so on. Actually, my friend is having a baby and I was trying to buy her a baby gift and it's amazing. It already starts there, boy, girl pink or blue. So I'm very excited to see what the world is, um, how how the world will change um, in order to embrace the more innate talent that is within us to get rid of the stereotyping. Um, but also what I'm, I've heard in everyone's conversation here, everyone, Lamia, touched upon it too. I think this reset that COVID has evoked, I think is calling for of the exploration of values, mm -hmm. of human values. And that also means human consideration towards each other and certainly human consideration um, towards the planet and how we within our professions can proceed with our profession, but in a more environmentally safe and sound um, way. But also culturally, I think uh, in terms of fashion, what's very interesting, what, what, what I'm noticing in the fashion industry, there's a greater tapping into um, cultural heritage, artisanal uh, ways of making things, um, craftsmanship that has existed over the centuries, you know, how that is being embraced and um, being implemented. So I think it's, it's, and also what I've just noticed in terms of the Saudi Arabian fashion, you know, the tapping into that cultural heritage, but teaming it up with the modern and with the relevant and with the new materials, it's so exciting. It's really... Um, I don't know. It's it's a new creative expression. So that's what I'm very much looking forward to. And I really look forward to, you know, certainly within our program, um, enabling the younger generation to have a voice because they're so considerate um, and they're so communally thinking. But I'm also seeing that organizations and governments are becoming more considerate towards having giving a voice to people, to younger generations. And again, I so appreciate our collaboration with the UN and, you know, our project um, will give all those young designers the opportunity to be seen at the UN General Assembly in September. So again, Sarah, back to communication. I think it's amazing um, that the UN is doing that. And again, it's up to us individuals to communicate our values, to share our values, because inevitably, you know, um, there is a certain element of being contagious with that. So we're all here in a position of having an incredibly positive impact. So, Mary, that's what excites me. <laughs> Love that. Very exciting. I'm, I, I think that we, <coughs> excuse me, as we're, we're coming out of hibernation, right? We are coming out of a time when we all got a, a lot of time to do introspection. Um, it created the opportunity for us to come together like this, which is amazing. Um, but we, we've emerged with new values and new appreciation of one another and of what we can do and the changes we can make. And that is just so exciting. And if we hold on to that and make positive change, um, we're going to make a great world. We'll be luminaries. Um, so I want to ask Lamia, um, please share your creative process. I was so impressed with the way you tell a story through your collection. Could you share that with us and, and tell us what you're really excited about this year? Okay, so uh, the, the whole designing process starts with my husband, who's the creative, uh, who's, the, who's the founder and creative director of Les Benjamins. And uh, we tell stories from the East and we kind of translate it into clothing. So it's all about our culture, our heritage, you know. It, it really inspires me when we find stories within the stories, you know. It can be um, an architect building or it can be um, 
a song that's related to a story or it can be a person you know uh, there's a lot of aspects uh, wh while designing because you want to tell the story as much as possible and make it very inspiring mm -hmm. because that's what drove us and dro drives me in general uh, to design so um, that's that's how I'm, I'm going to just say it briefly. And uh, the most exciting thing that's going to happen actually is opening our third flagship store, which is going to be this October uh, in Dubai. Hoping to open more stores in the future and like tell more stories also. All right. <clears throat> so... You know, Nadia, Oscar, Sarah, you all have really collaborated with academia as you pursue your work in um, the fashion industry. And I'm wondering, how can you make a difference in, with academia in terms of the content that's taught, the students' perception of what fashion's role is in, in culture, and the, ro and, and the way fashion can actually change how people think, what they value. So um, I'll start with Sarah. Well, uh, the I think the the answer is I mean today we're here in a, uh, in a, such a, an amazing platform and new platform because it's starting from today onwards and it's a, a country that it's in, it's kind of new to the fashion industry but it has such such potential of communication and always creating awareness and I think that it's fundamental to create that fashion, that cultural clash which means to really exchange and and interact with uh, as many people as possible. So I think this is uh, the starting point of, the, of a beginning of really exchanging uh, um, cultures, experiences and, and education throughout all the different countries where obviously there is a focus on fashion, but it's not just about fashion. Here we are talking about the whole system. So I think it's it's here it could be really the starting point of something new and really about the cultural clash that is happening every day and it's really increasing day by day and we see it in any kind of communication, in TV, in in creatives, in designers, that there are so many designers that come from different parts of the world and desire to exchange because in exchange you get really kind of um, absorb the traditions and executions of other people. So I think it's that's really fundamental the cultural clash between people and countries. Yeah, that. Oscar, were you going to say something? I, yes. Um, uh, well, I, I'm, you know, I'm a UNESCO ambassador for sustainability. And I like to say always that U UNESCO means United Nations for Education, Science and Culture. So, um it's about everything what you just said Sarah. it's a, uh, it's a collaboration and meeting all cult cultures and and thinking about uh, what's the legacy we have to bring to united nations <laughs> so i mean I, i'm not talking about the, the institution but what it means exactly what it means and education science and culture it's exactly what we need now um to to bring this sustainable design thinking into the academia. We, it's not about bringing only the materials, what so, is necessary, what are the criteria, and things like that. But the thinking, designers, student designers has to imagine the, beautiful, the beauty as the same as sustainability together. And, and if it's something that uh, is comfortable, it's trendable, it's everything. So sustainability must be behind. So academia, yes, I think uh, we have to, 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 to train our design students into that. And much more important, we have to bring uh, the culture of fashion. So I... Thank you, Oscar. You know, this, this conversation, this time period went way too fast. Um, there's so much more to ask all of you. Thank you for your contribution. Really, thank each and every one of you. Nadia, Oscar, Sarah, Lamia, you've been great guests. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and hope. 
Um, now I'm going to hand over the, um, the stage to the MC Tagreed.